friends. I'm excited to be here with you today to share a layout that I made for the Vicki Booten design team. I am using the Discover and Create collection, and I started with one of the papers from the mixed media pad of paper that you can get in this collection, and then also the stamps. So I stamped some flowers with archival ink on the pink section of that mixed media paper and the orange section. So I stamped the pink and pink and the orange and orange. And then I also stamped some flowers using green archival uh, archival ink. So really I didn't end up, I was thinking I was going to be adding some mixed media to those flowers. So I st stamped with archival ink because I was going to add some other layers, but I ended up really liking how they looked just the way that they were. So uh, you could just stamp with regular ink uh, if you were, if you were going to create the same layout. And then I took one of the flowers you saw there. I took some flowers from the ephemera set and the papery set and uh, trimmed the white off of those. And then here, what I'm doing is I took one of the patterned papers from the collection, that grid paper, and I cut three strips at two and a half inches by seven inches. So I have those three strips laid out there. And that's going to be kind of the general gist of the layout that I'm going to have going on. So the three strips, and then I'm using that turqu that light kind of aqua -y colored patterned paper as the background. So that is also in the collection. So I traced around where those three pieces of paper are gonna go, and then I'm just gonna add some gesso in the top left corner, and then the bottom right corner. And I am using my brayer tool to kind of spread that gesso out. So I only used just a little bit up here at the top, and spread it out, because I know right where my mixed media is gonna go, kind of poking out of the edge of those pieces of grid patterned paper. And then here at the bottom, I accidentally sprayed or uh, squirted on too much gesso. So you do see that I spread it out to a much larger area, but it's gonna be covered by the, by the grid paper, so it doesn't really matter. So I go ahead and spread that out. I'm kind of erasing my pencil lines a little bit. And then I'm gonna distress the edges of this, of these patterned paper strips with my Tim Holtz edge distress, distressor. And then I'm laying out those papers where I think they're going to go. And then I'm gonna use two mediums here. One, is, they're both shimmers. They're actually both the shimmers formula from Shimmers Paints. The green one is celery, and then the yellow one is called Bumbly Bee. So I'm using those two colors. And what I'm doing here is I'm gonna be adding flowers a large cluster of flowers in the top left and a large cluster of flowers in the bottom right. And so I wanted this green color, kind of a greenish, yellowish color to poke out behind the flowers. It's going to be a subtle, a subtle element on the page. It's not going to be an overwhelming thing that you see because most of it is covered up. But I did want it poking out back there because it's a floor, you know, a cluster of flowers. So I wanted it like to kind of to act as the greenery behind those flowers. So I add just around where I know the paper is going to go. And I'm trying to match that patterned paper or the mixed media piece of paper that I used to stamp some green flowers. It's kind of a yellowish green uh, paper. Those leaves are kind of sitting off to the right right there. And I was trying to match that kind of yellowy green color so that it all blended together. And I do end up liking how those colors look together. They're different enough that you can still see the leaves on that background, but they blend, they speak to each other for sure. And what I'm spraying, you've seen me spray a couple of times on top of there, I was just, spray, I'm spraying water to help spread out the paint. And the shimmers formula here, this is a very shiny shimmery uh, medium that I'm adding. So it will have lots of sparkle and shine on the final layout when it's dry. And then out here, I'm just adding a few little splatters. And then I am gonna use my heat gun to just dry it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna, I got a little impatient. <laughs> so I'm just using paper towels to roll up some of the excess liquid and it is dry now. So I do bend it just a little bit because I know I'm going to be 
I want it to sit as flat as possible and it does stay really flat. That's what the, that's the purpose of the gesso to help the color maintain its color and then also to help protect the paper from warping. Really the main reason I use gesso, because I don't mind paper warping, I can flatten it back out. But the main reason I use the gesso is to make sure that the color is, like that green color is vivid on the background. If you put green, like a green paint, like shimmers on turquoise paper, you're not going to end up with the same green that you would as if you put it on white. So the white gesso helps maintain the color of the paints. And then here I'm going to glue these papers down. I'm using my T-square ruler there to help make sure I get it straight. I'm not measuring where on the page they go. I'm just using it as a straight edge. I'm going to put it on the other side. Make sure I've got it straight. Not usually, usually super particular about things being super straight, but I do, when it's a main element, like the... It's the main element on the background. I do want those to be straight because it would be distracting if they were crooked. Okay, and then here, this is the six by eight paper pad from the Discover and Create collection. And I am going to pull out a piece of patterned paper that I'm going to use as the main matting for my photos or the main kind of background layer for my photos. So, and I'm going to, first I'm going to frame those on white. I'm going to do a little white border. And these pictures are from a day, our food, one of our food tours that we did in Greece. My daughter, what, while our um, Lucamades, like donuts, yummy donuts, they're called Lucamades, um, while they were cooking, um, my daughter was in the kitchen entertaining the kitchen staff and having them participate in gymnastics and dance moves with her. So I thought these pictures were super cute and reminded me of such a fun time that we had on this on this day, so I wanted to make sure that they're included in our Grease album. So that striped paper, because it's got a lot of the colors that I'm going to be using on the with the flowers that I'm going to be adding. I love that colorful, those colorful stripes. And they're um, not overwhelming on the final layout. Like you only see parts of that, of that matting, but it does add a pop of color, which I love because I am using sort of, you know, neutrals there on the background by using that grid paper and neutrals are not usually my thing. So <laughs> I have to pop it up with the color somehow. So I, here I opened the washi tape from the Discover, same collection, Discover and Create. And I am just tearing a few little pieces of washi tape to put behind my photos there. So that first one that I used was just a pattern, like a turquoise, it looks almost like little flowers on it. And then this one that I'm tearing right now is tickets, which I love this washi tape. I'm going to have to make a layout with those all the way across the background because it's fantastic. Those are fantastic. I love those little ticket. And they're actually like perforated between each ticket and on the washi tape roll. Um, really cool, really cool tape there. And they're all different colors, little tickets. So all the different colors from the collection, which I love. And then for the bottom piece, I kind of play around with a couple of different ones, but I'm going to end up using, there's one that's white and has really colorful pencils, like matte pencils across, the, or uh, colored pencils across the bottom. So I'm going to tear off the white part and just use the colorful, like it almost looks like colorful stripes when you tear off the tops of the pencils. So I'm going to use that across the bottom. I love washi tape and using it as layering and lots of different things you can do with it. I always do add my own adhesive to the back of it because washi tape is intended to be like you can lift it back up and I don't ever want it to lift on my layout. I want it to stay forever on the on the background. So I do add my own permanent adhesive to it. And then there I'm popping up that layer with my photos on it on craft foam. That's just cheap craft foam from my local craft store. I add my own adhesive. And then I'm going to start working on the floral clusters. So I will have one in the top left, a giant bouquet or cluster of flowers. And I will pop all of those up on different levels of craft, different kinds of craft foam. And here I'm tucking in the flowers that I stamped. So all of the orange ones are the ones that I stamped and the pink ones. And then the others come from 
Um, like the purple one is from a piece of patterned paper in the collection that I had fussy cut for another layout. I had a couple of those left over. So the purple one is from patterned paper. The white one is from the ephemera set. And then that turquoise -ish blue and blue one, uh, those are from the papery set. And that's like a vellum sticker. So I did take that vellum sticker and put it down on a piece of solid white so that the color is, that turquoise flower is vivid. If you were just to stick that, those turquoise, those like vellum stickers down on a pattern paper with it behind it, you would see the pattern behind it. So I didn't want that. I wanted it to be a very vivid turquoise, so, or aqua. So I put it on white paper. And then here, these are also uh, some of one of the vellum. No, actually, I think that those leaves are from the ephemera set. So I am using, it's just supposed to be one, like one uh, spray of leaves, but I am able to use them all over the layout by just cutting them apart and cutting them in little sets of twos and threes to tuck into my cluster. And then for sure, if, if you've watched my videos before and watched me do that, you know, you've heard me say this a bunch of times, but when you're doing floral clusters, it does help if you make your leaves and your different um, like greenery and things that you're adding in, they should all be going different directions. So if you were to add leaves to clusters and then had all the leaves going the same direction, it's going to look weird because <laughs> that's not how leaves grow or flowers grow or when you have a bouquet, like, you know, leaves and all the stuff goes all different ways. So um, and then also the, the petals on the flowers, I did cut snip in between each petal so that I could bend those up and, and um, roll them and curl them so that it looks like it's kind of growing out of the page. Okay, and then here, this little phrase, uh, this little phrase piece banner is from the FM, one of the ephemera sets and it says, so amazing. And then I'm gonna use the chipboard alphas from the collection. I love these alphas and all the different colors and sizes and types of fonts on here. So I'm going, to, it, my title is gonna say, this girl, so amazing. And then my journaling is going to be about her, how much fun it is to travel with her. And um, she definitely has a magnetic personality and makes friends everywhere she goes. She's never met a stranger. So we have to be careful with that a little bit sometimes because even in foreign countries, she just, she loves people. So, um, but it's amazing. And it's an, an amazing quality to have for sure. So I love seeing how she loves people everywhere that we go. So that's really what the journaling is about. And then um, the layout, like the general layout being the colorful flowers and the butterflies, like she loves color and butterflies and rainbows and all things girly. So uh, this layout definitely speaks to her personality for sure. Here, what I'm doing with this little blue, um, it's a very fine line pen. I am tracing around the L in girl um, because I used a light, a really, really light pink L from that font set. And it was kind of hard to see on the grid pattern paper. So I traced around that. And then I also traced around the R because um, it's like an R that has the spaces filled in with a darker orange, but it was kind of hard to tell that it was an R. So I just traced around it with that navy blue pen. And then here, these are the frames, the chipboard frames from the collection. I love, this is one of my favorite sets of chipboard frames ever because it's, there's enough in there that are big to frame large photos and then um, all different types, uh, shapes and sizes and types of frames. So I love those. Here, I'm using it just as a layering piece to kind of frame out that background layer. So I'm cutting off the parts that I don't need and I'm going to end up layering those inside of the other frame. So the black and white polka dot that I'm putting in the top right, the piece that I cut off that I'm not using up there, I'm going to use, just layer it right inside of the black frame at the bottom and vice versa. I'm going to use the black piece that I cut off to layer inside of the black and white polka dot at the top. So I will do that at the end once I'm done with all the clusters. So here I'm starting on the cluster down at the bottom right. I'm going to do a couple of the flowers, get those adhered down, and then I realize I want to put my journaling straight onto that grid paper. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. I'm yawning. Um, so I wanted to add the journaling straight to that grid paper on the background, and I knew if I had put my clusters down, it would be hard to write. Um, 
so I wanted to be able to, to do that journaling before I had, like, had to hold my hand weird to write. So I'm going to put it straight on there. And it's just talking about how much fun it is to travel with my sweet girl. And then I did put the one of the flowers back on just to kind of see where my journaling needed to go because I wanted it to go kind of around the cluster of flowers. So I'm checking that out, making sure it's in the right spot. That little light kind of tangerine or corally color flower is also from the ephemera set. And then I'm adding in a couple of more little butterflies. And I go back and add, I always do the flowers when I'm doing floral clusters. I always add flowers first and then go back when I'm finished to add all of the leaves and greenery so that I can see where it needs it and um, how to, you know, how to balance the, the cluster. And then here from the six by eight paper pad, I'm cutting out that yellow butterfly. It needed a little pop of yellow because there's yellow in that pattern paper behind the photo. And I have a little yellow on the background, so I wanted it to kind of all tie together. And I'm adding a little bit more of that washi because I had it just kind of on the bottom right of the photo and I, a lot of it was covered up. So I wanted to add just a little bit more, a little pop of color there. It's a small detail, like maybe not even necessary. I don't know. I think all the small details are necessary though. So um, it, that would be, but it's not something you would have to do if you were kind of copying the general gist of this layout. And then here I am adding um, little foam hearts. That's a little sticker set from the collection. And I'm adding those just because my title and the journaling next to it were very linear. Like they were kind of went straight across the page and I didn't really want anything to be super linear on there. So um, I added the hearts to kind of break up that line for my, for my eye. Okay, here's where I'm layering in the little leftover pieces of the frame. So I already kind of talked about that. So I'm just going to glue it in and poke it behind that pattern of paper. Also something that's not overwhelming, but it definitely balances the black at the top right. Adding in that salt, more solid black piece of the frame kind of balances the, the darker black frame at the bottom. And then here, I also want to balance some more of the black. So I am taking little black crystals that I have from my stash, and I'm adding a black crystal to the center of each flower. Usually I add either pops of color in the center of my flowers, or I'll add, um, so pops of color is like the, it's like puff paint, uh, medium from scrapbook.com, what I'm adding right now. Um, so I usually add either that or... Um, coordinating like colorful crystals, but I really liked the black on this because I have a lot of black in the layout, in the title, my journaling. So I wanted to kind of tie in black to the floral clusters. So I do go back and add pops of color around each of those little black crystals. And then I made a mistake um, on when I was adding the pops of color around the hearts, the puffy hearts right above the title. Um, and I ended up needing to wipe them off because it looked terrible. Uh, and so it kind of left like yellow and orange as when I wiped it off, it kind of left like some stuff behind it. So I went and added some yellow, some more of the Bumbly Bee yellow medium around those hearts. And then down at the bottom left of my photos to kind of balance all the color. So now I like how it looks. And there is the still photo, still photos of the layout. If you have any questions, you can pop them down in the comments. I would be happy to answer them, and I hope you guys have an awesome day. Thanks for watching. Bye.